Blender is much like Mr. Potato Head. Straight out of the box, it's pretty fun and cool, but there's a lot of things you can add to make it that much more fun and fit your preferences. Speaking about preferences, let's open those up in Blender and let's have a look at some of the best settings and built-in add-ons Blender has to offer. All right, so let's begin with the interface tab in our preferences here. Since I do tutorials, I have set my resolution skill to be higher than the default one. And in this case, I'm using 1.25. And this is because I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. So yeah, you can set this up to be basically anything you want and just find something that works for your screen. Now I have developer extras enabled, which in turn gives access to the experimental tab down here. Now in my current build of Blender, which is 3.5, this does practically nothing. Thing. But in branch builds, uh, which Blender releases every now and then, sometimes this gives you access to currently in development features. Now next in the viewport tab, there's only one thing worth mentioning, and that is the subdivision tab. So if you have a decent GPU, for example, I'm working with a RTX 3070 Ti, you can enable GPU accelerated subdivision. This will make sure that Blender uses your GPU to speed up your workflow when using high poly subdivided models. The next few tabs we can basically skip and now logically we would end up at the add-ons tab but before we go into that let's just complete all the other preference related tabs the input tab is a place where laptop users can rejoice since it enables two options which are perfect for laptops first is the emulate three button mouse and second is the emulate numpad the first is perfect for those of you who use a trackpad on a laptop for example and not an external mouse and want to emulate a middle mouse button so by enabling this feature you can now hold alt and then click to emulate a middle mouse and in this way orbit around your models. The ladder or the emulate numpad will make sure that all your numeric keys from one through zero at the top of your keyboard are now functional as numpad keys. Now desktop users with a full size keyboard won't have this problem, but laptop users usually don't have a numpad and the numpad is very convenient for giving you access to certain views inside of your modeling workflow. Next we have navigation and let me be real here, I completely stole this from Derek Elliott. I saw his video on his settings and it convinced me to use the orbit around selection. So I have this enabled which will make sure that whenever I select an object the camera will orbit around it. So if I middle mouse click and just drag it will orbit around my selected object. If I don't have anything selected it will still orbit around your mouse just like its default inside a blender. I find the orbit around selection to be a bit more natural and makes a bit more sense so that's why I enabled it in my settings. System preferences. Most important in here is to make sure that Blender is using your GPU and only your GPU, so not your CPU, to render. So make sure that it's not set to none, which in some cases it is by default, but instead to either CUDA or optics, depending on which type of GPU you have. And then respectively in this tab, make sure your GPU is enabled and your CPU is disabled. This will make sure Blender only uses your GPU, which really speeds up your rendering. I've heard so many people who have a good GPU and have this accidentally set to none and resulting in very slow renders and a lot of frustration with the fix being so painfully simple. Now, if you have a beefy PC with a good amount of RAM, you can also crank up the amount of undo steps in this tab, which is very handy for people like me who tend to not save their work in progress versions of their models. So this will allow you to go back further in time, erasing more of your mistakes that you made along your modeling journey. The final two very handy options can be found in the save and load tab. The first of these is the load UI option, which by default is enabled and make sure that whenever you open up a project made by someone else, Else, you're also opening up their workspace. Oh, no. Now, if you spend a little bit of time crafting your own workspace that works for you, like for example, I have, then it's not very handy that you get this new workspace when opening up somebody else's file. So what you can do is just disable load UI, and this will make sure that Blender maintains your own workspace even when opening up other people's files. The next option is auto save and is enabled by default and it should always remain enabled. However, if you tend to run into a lot of crashes when working in Blender, it might be good to change the timer setting. So the timer by default is set to two, I believe, but you can decrease this value to be one or maybe even lower just to make sure that Blender auto saves more frequently and you don't lose any progress. Oh, and just a crucial side note here. If you want to save the preferences you have made, make sure to go down here and just either save your preferences or enable the auto save preferences feature to let Blender do it automatically.
Getting the right settings in Blender allows you to customize, improve and change the way you work. They can provide a great starting point in your journey to becoming a Blender Pro. And assuming your goal is to become just that, a professional, I'd recommend checking out Blender Academy. Why? Well, because this is exactly their goal, turning you into a Blender Pro. With the correct information, in the right order and a customized level of difficulty for you, Blender Academy can help you learn Blender faster than ever. Their lead instructor Alex has taught thousands of professionals in classrooms and created a video course library for people who are truly serious about learning Blender. So if you're one of those people who needs to use Blender professionally or someone who aspires to become a leading force within the industry, this membership is the one for you. If you're just casually experimenting though, it might not be and that's fine as well. But in that case, do make sure to check out their YouTube channel for regular content perfect for beginning Blender users. And now for the good part, Blender Academy has given me a great offer to share with you guys. By becoming a member now through the link below and using code Kaizen, you can get 20% off on your first month. Finally, I want to say thanks a lot to Blender Academy for supporting the channel and making sure I can provide these videos to you guys for free. Next, let's get into one of the things that makes Mr. Potato Head, I mean Blender, so great, add-ons. Now, before you start typing a comment about Blender add-ons costing money, I'm looking at you, Timmy. There's actually a lot of free built-in add-ons that you can enable to improve your Blender workflow and experience. These are all free and built into Blender, so just enable them if you want these features as well. Add Curve, Curve Tools. Adds in additional functionalities for Bezier's in curves like subdividing and filleting. Add Curve, Extra Objects. Adds additional curve objects like spirals and knots. Add Curve, Sapling Tree Gen. Allows you to add curve base trees and customize, rig and animate them. Add Mesh, ANT Landscape, a great tool with a lot of available presets to quickly and easily generate landscapes in Blender. Add Mesh, Archer Mesh, adds additional mesh objects like doors, windows, shelves, curtains and stairs, which is perfect for when you're doing Archface renders. Camera, Add Camera Rigs, allows you to add in two more default camera rigs. These are the Dolly Camera Rig and the Crane Camera Rig. Import, Export, Import Images as planes. This is one of my favorite built-in add-ons that allows you to simply import any image into Blender as a plane, which is perfect for creating static backgrounds of skies for example, or for importing reference images when doing modeling. Import export scalable vector graphics. This add-on allows you to import SVG files as curves and use these in your project. Polyfjord for example has a great tutorial on creating cool 3D icons using these files and I do have some myself as well. Mesh loop tools. This is another favorite of mine, allowing you to quickly change and add geometry when modeling. It's the best way to turn any amount of edges or faces into a circle with just one click. Node, Node Wrangler. Well, I mean, do I even need to explain this one? I've mentioned it so many times in my videos. If you do shading, geometry nodes, or any type of node-based workflow, Node Wrangler is a must-have and makes your life a little bit easier by providing shortcuts and various tools for speeding up your workflow. Object, Bool Tool. In essence, this is a basic version of paid apps such as Hardops or Box Cutter, which allows you to do simpler Boolean operations and makes Boolean workflows just that much more enjoyable compared to using the Boolean modifier. Now, so far, all of the settings you've changed and add-ons you've enabled or disabled are done inside of Blender's preferences. However, there's also things we can change inside of Blender's workspace. So let's say, for example, that whenever you open up Blender, you want to have two big windows instead of just one. You can simply click and drag in the top corner or any corner of a window to open up a new window. So we can just drag in a new big window here. And then let's say that we want this window to be four separate windows, which in each occasion show a different angle of our model. So we just use the same technique to create four windows out of this one big one. And then we can use the numpad keys to generate a certain view for each window. So one could be the front, one could be the back, one could be a side view, and finally a top view. Then you might also want to change some of the overlays here in the overlay menu just to clean up this window a little bit. And finally, when you're happy with it, you can go to file default save startup file. Now this will make sure that whenever you open up Blender, this is exactly how it will look. Now you can make any amount of changes that you want to your workspaces and save it to your default startup file to make sure that Blender works as best as possible for you. I gotta tell you, it was perfect. Perfect. Everything down to the last minute details. If however you're not happy with any of the changes that you've done, you can always go to file 
default and then load factory settings to reset everything back to Blender's default. Now, before I wrap things up, you might have seen it in the background over here. But yeah, the channel just reached 100k uh, subs, which is insane to me. And I just got my play button in the mill here. Let me just there it is and it's it's so cool it's been a hell of a ride to get here and i cannot express enough how much i appreciate everybody who's watched my videos liked shared left a comment so yeah thank you so much to all of you and thank you so much for your support throughout all of this especially to my patrons as well who really help support the channel uh, you can see him up here now thank you and i look forward to creating many many more videos for you guys in the future which i hope you will enjoy of course with that said though you now know some of the best settings and built-in add-ons for blender but you might not know the best settings for getting faster renders so let me fix that by watching this video next oh and if you're looking for something different and fun to do in blender why not check out this video here to learn how to take your blender models and turn them into even cooler ar effects